starting off with Creature from the Black Lagoon Lives from the Universal Monsters uh, IP. This is from Image Comics. And Stein, you have all covers on this one, right? Yeah, like basically pretty much all the variants are selling at or slightly above ratio. There is a bunch of covers and there are some... That um, Ross cover is. Whoa. There's some re- there's some really good um, exclusives on this as well, and those are all selling pretty well. I did just I, there was too many of them to like list, but there are some really really good covers out of out of this. Yeah, there is an absolute grip of them. I like the the Ross one's good, but I wish it wasn't black and white. That there's there is a non black and white. There's a color version. Oh, okay, yeah. good. I don't know where it is or how you get it. Maybe it's directly from Alex Ross. I don't know. This I one's really is. good, too. I don't know where it's from, but I like it. So, Is that a, uh, is that a Nirvana? Uh, smells like Teen Spirit kind of Yeah, swipe? right here. Yeah. yeah. Well, kind of. It looks like it a little bit because yeah. of the blue. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's great, man. That's so creepy. <laughs> so... Yeah, so Creature from the Black Lagoon. I like the regular A cover, too. The A cover is great. Yeah, I agree. It's really good. So I can see a lot of people going crazy for all these Universal Monsters stuff. Now I got to search. It's going to be tougher for me to find my uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon Archie book. Yeah, Jordan said he picked. There's a Clayton Crane variant of this, too. That that was pretty good. That was not on what cover price showed, but c2e2 oh. stuff there's a lot of c2e2 variants out there you guys shout out to everybody at c2e2 yeah oh, cover nice. price actually put a, a hannah from cover price she actually did a really good article on the site of all the c2e2 exclusives what booth they'll be at and how much to buy in it oh that's so, awesome they they yeah. tend to do that for like a lot of the big cons so that's awesome yeah, there cool. they, yeah. they, they do yeah. it for like yeah that saved YouTube. That saved our ass, me and Leg's ass at uh, San Diego. San Diego, yeah, in a big. Ooh, I'm big excited then for for San Diego this year. Yeah, There's so many of those Jordan books too, man. Anyways, um, let's move on. Next, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number one fifty. This is the Eastman Black and White Virgin one in fifty, which is okay, and it sounds like it's moving, right, Stein? Yeah, so me and Richie kind of talked. I, I initially had this on the 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 ten list. Um, I moved it off of the list. It's it's selling above ratio. I mean, it's selling for like sixty five ish. Um, it's I can't tell if it's good or not good, and and I don't <laughs> think I don't think Eastman is the actual. I think I think because I think uh, if you look at the, I think. I think it's more of Sophie Campbell and then yeah. Eastman well, may have touched it up or something because her name is like in the signature. Her name is first. Well, so, I'm telling you what, man, I, I her her variant, the one in 25 that she did is absolutely gorgeous. Did you guys what do you guys think of that one? Did you guys see it? Yeah, it's good. I, I that was actually oh, selling, yeah. that, that was actually selling pretty good, too. But it's just not a lot of here's much bump in value. So here's why I love it. Uh, even more that I think is so great about it. It looks great with the trade dress, but there's also a foil variant for it. And look how good it looks in foil. Oh yeah. I mean, it is just gorgeous. And look at that. It's got oh, all the new characters on the cover. Of course, this has got what four first appearances or something like that. So, and you got the characters on the cover, which is great. It's a big deal. I mean, how yeah. many first appearances? It, One, two, three, three. So, children created by Donatello. Three new turtles. What does that mean? Created by Donatello. Probably the same way that yeah. uh, what's his name created the turtles. Poured a little mutagen yep. on them. Yep. In the test okay. tube. Yeah. So, it, so they're not his kids. Well, he didn't birth them. Hmm. Okay. They weren't splinters. It wasn't splinters' kids, but he called them his children. I mean, technically, I know, but I, he would be their god, right? I'm just, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the logic behind it, and I don't, 
I, I think I need to throw that out the window. <laughs> you're, you're talking about talking turtles, man. I, I know, I know. <laughs> so is well, this the final you... issue? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, they're going to restart shipping. the run. With Jason Aaron. Yeah. So that's a great so play you... on, on this as a spec book. You know? Do you think this was just given the Eastman treat treatment with his like ink style and like he probably did the inking to it just to to have that credit as well like and it's also like a almost like a farewell thing <laughs> who knows Maybe. the regular I mean if you look yeah. at the regular I like the regular better even though you know it looks better obviously because of the color in it but oh yeah that's cool that they the color splash yeah even even in the i guess water and in donatello's headband it's, see it's purple and then in the water it's all the other turtles headband colors that's really good that's a great design on that cover and that one does say sophie campbell so excellent what'd you say this was selling at the one in 50 like 65 ish nice Nice. All right, moving on. Symbiote Spider-Man 2099, issue number one, second print, Virgin, one in 25, by Ken Lashley. Yeah. <laughs> We're all super <laughs> excited about this one. Um, <laughs> um, this is uh, like 35 to 40. Ooh. Not many sales. Um, I wouldn't expect that Spider Man 29. I wouldn't expect many retailers to order a whole bunch of second prints on this. Mm -hmm. um, but does anybody really care? I yeah. guess probably not. People flipping them. Yep. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, if I, I guess I will say this if I sold this for $15, I'd probably buy it for 15 bucks. I probably wouldn't pay it. A, premium for it not have right you, now have would, you seen would you flip the... it no nah, i'd probably just throw it in a box and forget about it <laughs> have you seen <laughs> like three new... years later i'm like oh no but I, I remember these <laughs> in the new previews um they have this new thing that they're doing with the spider-man characters where it's like versus it's it's peter versus miles um tw spider-man 2099 versus venom 2099 uh you know, and it's and it's all the people in the Spider Verse that they're like they're like closest rivals or people that are closest to them. They're fighting each other in it, and the Spider Man twenty ninety nine versus Venom twenty ninety nine has some amazing covers because that Venom twenty ninety nine character and the Spider Man obviously Spider Man twenty ninety nine character they're designed so well in their costumes, and there's going to be some killer covers for that coming out. So. You know, go check out the new uh, previews for Marvel this week. Maybe that will offset the shittiness of the uh, Peter Parker or Green Goblin crap that's coming in Amazing Spider-Man. That being said, uh, moving on to one of the most talked about books this week, Slash Presents Deathstalker, issue number one. And there's three covers to talk about. There's the Connor Boyle 1 in 10, the Connor Boyle Virgin Signed cover, and the Boris Vallejo 1 in 50 that uh, a lot of people are talking about. And by the way, for those of you guys that don't know, Slash is a huge comics guy, and he's probably been wanting to have his own, you know, comics publishing imprint for a long time, and looks like he's got it with Vault, which is cool. Um, the blood. I did find out. I did find out the signed version. There are only a hundred of those. Ooh. So, oh wow, because um, I did find that on the uh, on the uh, previews world um, solicitation. But I can't figure out these variants. I don't. They they don't. None of the. I couldn't find. There's no um, information on how hard these are to get. The the Vallejo is way more expensive. It's like eighty dollars. Um, the slash with the trade dress is like 15 to 20. Um, the version, I don't think there's been any sales. I think there was one listed, uh, for like 800 or something like that. But yeah, that Vallejo is gorgeous. 
They're all good. So, is it made with Slash's blood? Hopefully, maybe, maybe. I don't know where, and I don't know where he signed it either. I don't know if it's signed on the cover or inside the cover on the back cover. I don't really know. Oh, so it is signed by Slash. Yes, it is. Okay, in blood on the guitar. Oh, awesome! And you, so you get a pick too. Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. Strings. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Ah, another. Did anybody get these? Drive us crazy. No, nobody yeah. that I know of got the slash books. Did you get any, uh, Richie? No, I really wanted that that virgin or the trade. I didn't care. I just wanted the slash covers. But no, yeah. yeah, I see everybody loving that Vallejo. It's it is really nice. Yeah, they're definitely oh. great. All right, next we have a one that's going to piss us off even more. Detective Comics issue number 411 facsimile variant by Wu Chu Li. It's I feel a like that's, C2 I feel EQ. like if you, I, I feel like that's a name that like you you're supposed to say fast to make it sound like another word or something like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> like Wu Chu Li. <laughs> <laughs> um Hey, watch what you say about my cousin. <laughs> Uh, my, what's funny you. my mom's maiden name is actually lee so is it really oh that's funny. yeah yeah um i i know i hate these facsimiles and i hate these th- but I, I like this cover i don't hate this cover at all oh, the cover's good but i just hate the facsimile variants man i do too i mean it is what it is i guess this is this is just at C2E2, but it's, it's supposedly only limited to 400, but we all know that that's probably not the real truth. But um, 400 per retailer. Um, yeah. 400, <laughs> yeah, per retailer. 400 at C2E2, then 400 at Fan Expo, then 400 at NYCC, <laughs> then another 400 at uh, at San Diego. Um, oh, so it goes year round. Yeah. Awesome. Got it. Um, but I do think I, I, this is like one of those that I think I would want, like just because I think I like the cover. Um, but this one's selling for like 50 to 60. Yeah. Uh, John Horn says facsimile means exact copy, right? Well, obviously <laughs> not here. I think the, the interior is, yeah, the, in, the interior is exact. Yeah. But, you know, I understand yeah, what he's getting at, you know? Don't call but it a facsimile if you're changing Ace shit. Is the exact copy or, yeah. or reproduction of the original. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, uh, what'd oh, what you say? It's a double cover. What if it's it a could be a double cover. cover yeah. And then it has the original on top of that because I've seen that before. Yeah. I don't like any of it. Yeah. Which mm. which this means that you know DC or whoever printed a bunch of the facsimiles and they didn't get all bought up. So they started putting covers on, on the outside. Yep. Well, did you see uh Marvel release uncanny X-Men 130 facsimile t- today? And they did a, just a normal facsimile. They did a foil. They did I like want to say they did a, a third one, but I know they did an incentive, so, a one in so, 25 with Dazzler. And it looks like one of those cheesy exclusives that we see all the time. They did so two my, cheesy exclusives. 135, too. not going to be worth anything then like coming up soon. Okay. Days of Future past. That's right. 41. 141. <laughs> no, that's the second. That's the second half. That's the second half for the story. This is 135. Oh, 135? Oh, that's okay, the Phoenix bad. stuff, right? Yeah. Stein with right. his uh we gotta get you uh ma- your mic mounted on, on the wall or something. What if I, I do you don't hear that whenever you hit the table. It, hit, have to, it sounds like, like you're hitting a gong. Yeah, it sounds like you're hitting. It's going. Dong. Hey, we hear just, the vibrations of the of the I, table. I'm just the... I'm just trying to mix things up. I know. Gotcha. I know. Uh, that that's the only way I can add sound effects. Yeah. I like it though. Mm, I don't change it. <laughs> Moving on. Here, here. How about this? I'm gonna set my cup back here. Even how better. One of the oh, coolest, if not. Okay, I'm going to put it in tie for the coolest book at C2E2 for me. This Harley Quinn, issue 39, Sosa Micah 
virgin foil variant of the Cowboy Harley, the cover of the year candidate. And this would probably, depending on how the foil looks on it, this could be just amazing. Especially if the black's not foil and the rest is. Oh, yeah. We we all know that DC foils are just dull. dull things. Just, yeah, they're just <laughs> washed out colors and yeah. they don't really pop. And Well, Nimesh says that book is gorgeous in person. So, And I Ooh. take Nimesh's uh, uh, word for it. That's for sure. It definitely has good taste. Yeah, I just, I just, what it, what is really confusing is the fact that what what was that variant for? Like issue thirty seven, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, the like same, it was like two months ago. Yeah, the and same then one just with, be, so, yeah, so then they made the the C two E two one thirty nine, which is weird. Yeah, thirty nine, which is weird. Like, is yeah, it, I agree. Like, just why didn't mm. you just do it on the other book that it was originally on? I mm-hmm. don't know. It's strange, yeah. but. It's a great cover, man. Absolutely amazing. How much are they selling for? That have they have they dropped? Uh, like forty to yeah, they're they're live for like forty to fifty. There's supposedly only fifteen hundred of these two, but again, it's a it's a retailer yeah. exclusive. So there's you know there's at least. I don't think it's a re. It, I don't think it's it a is. retailer. Is it? Yes. So, because normally, like, well, maybe they don't do it anymore. Do they? Does DC not do the? Because that's how they were doing it before. The DC boutique was selling them. No. Oh, the the, the graffiti artist or whatever it was called. Or whatever, yeah, like like yeah. Batman, like the Supergirl one, and all those all those foils that they had at the conventions. Those uh, Catwoman um, art germs. Those were all from like the DC booth. Well, Comic Kingdom Creative Virgin Foil. So. Yeah. Okay. Now I ha- then I hate it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. So because I, I, oh, be I'm just I'm just tired of. Uh, maybe maybe you, the retailer wasn't allowed to uh, do since 37 came out so recently. Maybe they weren't allowed to do that. So they asked if they could do it for the same run but a different issue. That's it's just that's, it's just it's, lame. I mean, can you really not be a little more creative? And oh, then, and, look at hey, this. Let me... Zabbit says, yeah, this is a retailer exclusive. They were all over whatnot. They also foiled up the Catwoman cover. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to buy the $4 one. That's yep. the actual cover. Yep. <laughs> I agree. So. I was going to wait for a year for now when no yeah. one cares. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. A beautiful Lady Death Visions Bewitching Lettered Edition variant from Coffin Comics. This is a an older um, one shot that they put out back way back in two thousand and eight. And as you guys know, Coffin Comics, you know that they're the books that they put out, especially the Lady Death ones, have just the most amazing variants and artists working on these variants. But I've never seen this one, and uh, it looks like it is signed too. So, I, and I have no idea how many of these there are. Like this one, the one that sold, um, it's got a, a coffin comic certificate on the back, but it doesn't say like limited to 200 or it doesn't say anything like that. It just says this is authentic, um, is all it says. And I don't know what lettered means. Do you know what lettered means? Um, bewitching lettered edition variant. No, that's a great question. It says lettered edition. I don't know. Oh, maybe, I don't know. That's a great question. Maybe we'll have to ask. You know what? I'm going to add this to uh, my list of questions for certain creators that next time we get them on, on a channel or, you know, we have them around that we can ask them these questions, we'll ask them and we'll have to ask Brian Polito about this one. Hmm. Um, well, this one sold for $517. Wow. And uh, one, Coffin Comics fans. Two, they, Coffin Comics and Brian Polito has always been very smart on how they limit stuff and they make their brand collectible and they never devalue their brand, which is very important. You know, you got a lot of people out there that are doing these retailer exclusive variants. They, they devalue them uh, a month after they've 
you know, initially started selling them by cutting them in price half and then cutting them in price another half. And the next thing you know, they're being sold for a dollar on eBay Live or whatnot. Um, after, you know, a, a four months ago, people were paying 40 to $50 a piece for them. That's devaluing your brand. Yeah, you'll never see Brian Polito devalue his brand, which is very important out there. So. It's one of the it's one of the few things that I give Mile High credit for. They have their store variants, and Chuck will not give you a discount on those. That you're hmm. you're paying you're paying forty bucks for them, whether they suck, he'll just hmm. he'll just he'll keep them to his grave. He will not give you a discount on those. Um, but is he loaded? I, I, is he rich? Chuck? Yeah. Oh, I'm Probably. sure he's. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he is. But. Um, I just, uh, what's crazy is, um, you know, when you, when you keep screwing your customers, if you keep making them pay 40, $50 for these exclusives up front oh. and you keep dropping the price later, they will not buy you. For, I mean, they're just going to stop buying. Like it's not, it's a terrible long-term business yeah. plan. Terrible. Tankerous says that the lettered editions were numbered A to Z. And there's only 26 copies, so. Oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. That's very hmm. cool. I asked you about the uh, Chuck from Mile High because I read all of those letters that come in from the email where they give mm -hmm. you a discount code, and man, he just goes through some cr a, a crazy amount of comments, it's like key issues too. Like it's nothing. Like boom, boom. Oh, we got fifteen thousand in today. 10,000 of them are Marvel vintage first appearance. Like, it's just insane. I mean, he buys collection. He drives all over the place, all over the country to pick up collections. So, oh, that's cool. Tom that's really says cool. Mile High doesn't even sell new comics anymore. No, no A lot way. of people jumping on that bandwagon, man. It's hard to sell new oh. comics and make money off of them anymore. So, all right. Moving on. This is an interesting one. There's not very many blank covers out there, you guys, that are super rare or limited, super limited, that sell for a lot. Well, Invincible number 111 is. It's one of them. Stein, what's going on here? Um, so this one has uh, kind of been collectible, um, but it I mean, basically, I think, I mean, people buy these because they do want, you know, to get, some artists to draw certain characters on it. And uh, there is this the only invincible blank? Um, I'm not sure, but did you guys happen to see Ryan Otley's uh, post today mm -mm. from C2E2? Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Watch. <laughs> he has one. Before and after. Look at that. Oh, man. Cover sketch. Oh, crap. Maybe wow, that's that. why. Yeah. He did that? And the color. Yeah, he the did color that. too. Wow. That's cool. That is just amazing sketch cover. Before and after. Wow. C2E2. Wow. Uh, so, so was it sketch or big clutch that got him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get, that gave him that blank. Because <laughs> I see him both commenting. Yeah. And they're both at the con. So which one was it? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm not even like a huge Otley fan, but man, that is really good. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, um, these bl these blanks are now selling for eighty dollars. Wow! By themselves, without without any sketches. So that's what a good artist on social media can do. He can turn blank covers into eighty dollars. Just like that, by putting out amazing work, quality sketches. It would be really hard to believe that this is the only Invincible, Invincible comic. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know the run that well to say, like, oh, yeah, it's the only blank. I but the is. only other... I was going to say the only other blank I remember about was, like, super... Exp or not that was hard to find and that was ex kind of expensive was the uh, bitter root one. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I found I one know. in the back issue for like five bucks or something like that. Oh, <laughs> I, and I knew Mel was like collecting a bunch of them at one point in time. I was like, Hey Mel, look what I found. He's like, he's like, sell it. 
Uh, JC comic stuff says that heart makes it. And I agree. That's a great little add on and how he put all the little things around it. Yeah. And that's good. That is such a good sketch. Man. Or cover. I don't, you can't even call that a sketch commission. Damn. Yeah. yeah like I wonder, I wonder what he was. Yeah. I wonder what he charged for that. Yeah. That's a great question. We'll have to find 800 out. bucks at least. Yeah. At least. Well, Ryan, let us know in a comment below. Uh, how much uh, did you charge for that beautiful commission? Moving on. This is a good one. A great one. A good one. <laughs> Batman and Lobo, issue number five, the German Doug Monkey variant that uh, I know we've all heard about and seen this book because it's always been such a uh, a much wanted book for a lot of people, and it plus it's got Bat Lobo, so you got to love that. Yeah, and this one, so this one was hard, really hard to get, and then the price kind of dropped. I think there was some, there was a, like a decent supply, and then they must have dried up or something because there was a nine eight sale eight months ago for like five hundred bucks for a nine eight. Um, this week, a nine a CGC nine six sold for seven fifty. Wow! Hmm. Damn! Wow! Uh, yeah, Black Spiders. Just because there, it's, this was never released in America. This is a German only variant. There you so go. You can't. Yeah, that's the only way you could get it. I wonder how many of them are out there. Probably uh, limited because I know a lot of those. Uh, European variants are limited, you know, to a thousand or five hundred or something like that, which isn't that limited, but all right. It's limited when you can't get when you can't get it here. Yeah. Unless you know I mean that makes it hard. Yeah. Josh, let us know in the comments below. Shout out international comics. All right, here we go. The next one and the final one. Disney the Little Mermaid, issue number three. Uh, which doesn't sound like when when I first saw this on the list, I was like, this has got to be like the early run, right? Nope. This is from the 2020 run. And I couldn't believe how much this thing is selling for. Yeah. So like issue number one um, has been kind of sought after because there, I, I just don't think they made very many of them. Um, and and I don't know if is this the last issue? Was it a, just a three issue? Yeah, series? I think it's the last issue. Yep. Um, yeah, this one, this one also, this is like the invincible. This also sold for eighty dollars raw. Um, so if you happen to see, I mean, I would never buy it like off the shelf. I would let little girls, <laughs> you know, little kids buy this. Um, but as a collectible. You're not gonna push over a kid for this? No, but I will. I don't know who you are, (laughs) Shooky. If I see this in a back issue bin, I will a thousand percent buy it. Um, Yeah, Yeah, eighty dollars. Because remember when I found that Animaniacs uh, nurse cover newsstand? Mm -hmm. That was on like one of those kid spinner racks of comics. Oh, nice. Yeah, I made sure to push out kids out of the way to get it. I was like, oh, this this isn't for kids. (laughs) <laughs> Bill I mean, says, well, my wife. Are we really says. kidding? There's no kids in comic stores anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Very cool. Well, still, still chilling. You need to take it from your wife. Get it graded. <laughs> yes, sir. Tell, tell her the, yeah, tell her adults are no longer allowed to own those, and you can just take the eighty bucks and go buy her something else. 